Hello, welcome to my first look at Card Shark. This game is a pretty heavily stylized, uh, like, it's very much going for a theme which it nails, which is like a nice hand-drawn 17th, technically 16th century, I think this game takes place in the 1700s century, like, medieval but not really cheating at cards game. Yeah, I know, that's a weird, weird description, but... I've played a little bit of it. I played a little more than I usually do for these reviews because I wanted to make sure I got it and I get it. My my basic understanding of this game is that it is broken up into a bunch of different card tricks that are pretty well known, I would say, with a little bit of a narrative going on in the background, you know, whatever. I'm uh, just here to cheat at cards, man. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's It came out today, today being June 2nd. It is $17 for the next week, and then it goes up to $20 when the sale ends. Uh, this game is controller supported, and it says when you start the game to consider using a controller. It is strongly recommended or something like that. This game also has a demo. If you go to the Steam page, you can check it out and try it for yourself. The developer of this game is Mariel, which I'm going to look and see if they've done anything else I've known. Uh, no, but they did a they did a Game of Thrones game called Reigns. I've never heard of this. Oh, this is like one of those swipe up, swipe down card games. Was this licensed by Game of Thrones? Huh. Anyway, uh, it's published by Devolver, who you've probably heard of. So, you know, if you if you have if you feel Devolver adds some weight. This is published by them, and that's fine. I don't, I don't really feel either way about Devolver. I know some people, some people really love Devolver. I don't, I don't dislike Devolver. I just don't feel much for them. Uh, but other than that, this game's in eleven languages. I'm gonna cheat and pull it up on Steam. We got English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, Japanese, both Chinese, Korean, Portuguese, and Russian. And it uses, you can use the Steam Deck on it as well. So yeah, I'll go through the settings real quick for you here. I've been trying to cut down on time in these first looks, though, so you know. Uh, they, they got what you'd expect. They got the language, they got your multiple volume options, which I've just kind of moved. I do, I appreciate sliders. I do also wish this came with a number. Like, in my perfect world, all of these things that are sliders, you give me a slider, and then you give me a number that I can click on and edit on the right. However, not everyone does that, I suppose. Uh... I don't know what the hell haptic feedback is, by the way, but this is an option. And then you can toggle full screen and change your resolution as you so desire. All pretty straightforward and basic stuff. I think that's about it. I'm gonna hop right in here. So, yeah, I've played a decent amount. I, I played uh, probably about, I think, 30 to 45 minutes. I'm gonna start a new game because this game is definitely uh, mostly narrative? I don't know if I'd say mostly narrative, but it has a pretty big narrative focus, I guess is the way that I would put it. And so, I'm gonna let you experience the story. I'm probably, I'm gonna skip through because the way that this basically works, oh, first of all, the game includes profanity and depictions of suicide, death, violence, and gambling. So, you know, I wanted to make sure I get that warning out there as well. Uh, if any of those topics you feel are uncomfortable, uh, maybe pass on this game. It is not suitable for children, indeed. Uh, there is, yeah, Card Shark is best experience with a gamepad. I'm playing on mouse and keyboard because you can't stop me. So you get to choose your difficulty. If you just want to chill and play through the story, but they have a difficulty for that. And if you want to play the con artist, I'm going to be honest with you. I've played a, I've played about 30 to 45 minutes. I would never willingly play on this difficulty. Permadeath in this game seems really frustrating. And that's it. That's all it feels is... Uh, um, if I am grasping what the permadeath is, which is you mess up one uh, con and you lose, I don't. It might not actually be that. It might be a little more. Uh, you have to make a bigger mistake than that to die. But like, yeah, I I would not play on that. I will play on this difficulty. I think that this is also a game that I don't really want to do a long form series on because it's kind of stressful. Anyway, my dear player, it is with the utmost diligence that I must warn you against the hazards of this game. I also mentioned there is no voice acting. This is a pure text-based game. They got like a little bit of the, the Monster Hunter ha huh going on when they talk, but you know. You get to flip over some cards here and it'll teach you secrets that will turn you easily into a beggar as into a king. Mm -hmm. Gambling, am I right, fellas? 
It is based on the memoir Sans Parole, a dangerous manuscript I unearthed in my beloved bouquiniste of the Nine Rue Blanche. The queen? That isn't the queen. Okay, so it actually, I, I flipped these over in a different order when I played last time, when I got closed my window before this tractor goes by. You're gonna hear it if I don't. All right, it's closed. Careful as you play through these fateful events and unravel the destiny of the Forgotten Queen. Yeah, you see, I, I did these in a different order last time, and I got the same story. It's a, it's a, because they're cheating. For here lies the work of the devil. Wait, the Jack of Hearts is the devil? <laughs> and then he turned them all into aces, did you see that? It all began on a misty morning on of 1743 near Pau in the south of France. Yeah, terrible news, by the way, this game does take place in France. Sorry, I forgot to, forgot to give you a French warning. Hey lad, come here. So gameplay, this is a very linear game where we just kind of click to interact outside of the actual gameplay. Did your majesty have a good nap? Our character, they're going to explain this to us very soon. He is also mute. And so we interact only through uh, facial expressions, which is kind of goofy. Not that I care. Get to work now. Mm -hmm. Get to work now. At the dog. Oh, game of the year. What are you doing fidgeting like a salmon about to meet the croute? Cro croute? I don't know how to pronounce that. If you're about to have one of your convulsions, then you'd best make sure my customers don't see it. Come on, lad, you need to earn your keep. Frig you, lady. Don't give me that look. Go serve the patrons. And then we go talk to this guy and we serve him a little drinky. Check out, this is step one of the gameplay. This is actually a pretty important mechanic of alcohol pouring. Good pour. Ah, oh, you know, I should go for a perfect pour. I don't know if I can. I should try it. I haven't tried. Why don't you keep me company? Take a seat. I sit. And then we go sit. Couldn't help but notice your mistress is rather rough with you. Yes. Can't you speak? No. You can't? How fascinating. Indubitably linked to these seizures your mistress spoke of so fondly. The ancient Greeks believe people like you possess prophetic abilities, you know. Yeah. What a nonsense if you ask me. Yeah. Com Comte, this is gonna be this is gonna be our, our boy for the first half or so. I mean he's been our boy for as far as I've played. Absolute Chad. Love this guy. Either way, you strike me as an intelligent fellow. Would you like to earn some extra cash? No, I hate cash. Listen closely, though there's money to be made, there's plenty more to lose. I'm gonna play a game of cards tonight and I'm going to win, thanks to you. Before I explain my plan, I have a question. Do you know what suits are? So, this is something that I really respect and appreciate about this game, is that they don't assume anything of you. If you ask for it here, I'll, I will actually do it. Uh, the game will explain to you the concept of suits and face cards, which I think is a nice touch. Like, I always appreciate things like this in video games, because most people are going to know what the different suits are, but some people aren't. So I definitely give it points for just taking the time to give you the option to go, yeah, and here's what a suit, of, a suit in the deck of cards is. You can tell which suit it belongs to by the symbols on the cards. This one belongs to clubs, this one is hearts, this one is spades, and this one is diamonds. They do this as well with face cards in a later portion, which I appreciate. In the game tonight, a strong hand is one of ma with many of the same suit. Mm -hmm. Good. Look at these cards, go ahead and pick the strongest suit. That's the suit you have the most cards of. Uh, it's definitely clubs. Yeah, that's right, clubs is the strongest seem to understand, but we should be sure. Would you like to try again? So this game does a- the, the game follows a very straightforward loop here of tutorialization and then actual gameplay uh, in, in rows, basically. So they tutorialize this concept and then you can either redo it if you want to grasp it again, or you can move on. It's a face with assured confidence, I think. Very well then. Where were we? Ah, that's right. I was going to explain my plan. You'll serve as wine as we play and peek at my opponent's cards, and you'll signal to me the best suit in his hand, whichever he has the most of. But how will you signal? You will take your cloth. So I already did this one. You you wipe in a pattern based on... I did all of these ones I'm going to show up here. We're wiping in a pattern based on which suit it is. And he's going to go through it and tell me the wiping patterns, but it's... Yep, clockwise for hearts, counterclockwise for spades. And it also, it's, it's very uh, forgiving, I suppose, is how I could put it. You can see it on the left there, what you're going to signal. So if I go, oh, I didn't mean to do spades, I can go around and I can do hearts like that. 
and you can just keep changing it up. And also, if you forget at any time, you can just click this bad boy, and I think it tells you, right? No, I guess it doesn't tell you which one it is. It just says a pattern. Up and down for diamonds, and then left and right for clubs. Thank you. We're we'll getting the hang of it up from a lot of you, but should we try the next trick? Yeah. Now this is the whole... This is the next part. So we're gonna pour the drink, and then while you're pouring, you have to look at his hand and go, okay, it's spades. You gotta do it while not over-pouring as well. And then you wipe the signal. Now, the big thing, and you'll get a grasp of this, this is number one of 28. Uh, each t each of these is a different trick. So each of 28 is a different mechanic that we do. I'll play, I'll try to play like the first three for this. And I will do this by skipping through a lot of the dialogue, to be honest. But the dialogue is important and the storyline going on is probably why you're playing this game. But the gameplay is also pretty fun, I think. Where has he gone, the gentleman who was at this table? Hmm. He didn't pay for his wine. I'll have to dock that from your wages. A bottle of wine is probably like five months of pay for this character. There's no way this guy's making good money as a busboy slash server. And then we got Colonel Gabriel. I'm in luck tonight. You, on the other hand, you will probably die soon on the gallows or of the pox. First of all, brother, what the hell? Depend on whether I embrace your principles or your mistress. Fucking got him. My apologies, I spoke in jest. Let me refill your cup. Hey, it's me. Hey, I'm here. How much you want to bet? How about five dollars? Now, later on, you get to actually adjust the bet. However, they become more suspicious. But you can, if you don't remember, you can go, oh yeah, peek at your opponent's hand while you pour them a glass of wine. Now, if you pour slowly, he shows his hand slower as well. We got... Oh, it's definitely clubs. I was trying to see if I could get, a, like, a full-on pour. I cannot. Clubs was left, right. I remember, I remember. And if you're wrong there, you just lose the round and play again. And if you run out of money, you run out of money and lose. And I think you have to reset. I don't know how it goes, honestly. But then they also increase the bet every round as well. What's it going to be today, buddy? It is spades. I think spades is counterclockwise. It is. Look at this guy. He's cracked. I'm a card-cheating fiend. Wipe that grin off your face. Yeah, yeah. I had a drink. You know. young, for young man, fortune favors me. I think I deserve a drink before playing. Would you be so kind as to refill my cup? Mm -hmm. I'll say when. When? You played the first rounds well, lad. But look to our opponent and you can see he's starting to get suspicious. This is where they interfe interfere with the other mechanic. <laughs> when you when you cheat, they start to get suspicious. And uh, I think that this always happens. Maybe I could hesitate, I don't know. But yeah, he pulls out the hand cannon on us. Because, you know, it was the 1700s. Uh, if you catch someone cheating, you just shoot them. <laughs> There's no law. Except this time he's gonna shoot her. Cause you know. We gotta progress the story. <laughs> Can you imagine living in a time where it's like, hey, I feel like you two are cheating at cards and you just pull out a gun and shoot them and you get to do it. Yeah, we gotta go, the law is common, you know. And we steal a purse, very cool. Very sad, very cool. Move on, please. Allow me. Where'd the dog go? Camp of the Cascaras, Ag in France, the following morning. Mm -hmm. And then this part here, we get to learn a new one. And like, that that's one trick, and then we, we just go do a new one. Arino my, Arino, my friend, do you hear that in the breeze? The rustle of the leaves and the murmur of the nearby brook. Our good friend the Comte has come. Comte? Comte? Maybe it's Comte. I'm gonna say Comte, but that might be wrong. This guy, these guys act as like a sort of... I don't know, you basically just give them money and I don't know why. Is the mechanic here. We'll stop here for a while. The gentleman who killed your patroness is Colonel Gabriel commanding the Beern regime, Regiment. It won't be long until he accuses you of this murder. You make a perfect scapegoat, you're poor, young, and mute, and you fled the crime scene with a thief. 
he's the thief, by the way. Don't worry, we're safe here. This is the camp of the Kasteros. They are friends, they don't talk. Like all the other Romani in France, they fall between the cracks. They're invisible like you. Yeah. Make yourself at home, I need to talk to the magician. Yeah, this, this actually is like a, it's not quite a hub, but it's like a place you can go back to at any time in the game. I want to get to the map, so I'm going to do three of these. Uh, hello. I'm going to be aggressive. Right, now I'm bored. Uh, and now I'm grumbling. Are you done making faces? No. New pet of our dear Comte de Saint Germain. No, don't answer that. My name is Irenio Funes, cheat and humble artist of the shadows. I trick my fellow man for money and adventure. Would you like to learn the magic? Sure. I don't know what happens if you refuse that, but he's going to teach us three card Monty. I'm sure you're aware of three card Monty. During the Hundred Years' War, an English lord lost the entirety of his estates over this game, which is a very English thing to do. Then he threw himself off the White Cliffs of Dover, which is a very French thing to do. Fucking got him. All right. So, I know the trick here. The trick, they, te they teach you how to cheat at this game after this. So I'm going to see if I can catch him cheating at this one now. You ready? You see the queen? I'll put her here. You put her here. Except he actually didn't put her there. She's here, I think. Because the trick you do uh, is... Tell me where the queen is? I think she's here. Dude, I'm cracked. The the trick you do there is you switch the cards, like you switch the queen with the nine that he has in hand. Luck is important, but don't rely on it. You seem to have understood everything. Go show off to the magician. Oh, that's cool. So if you don't do that, he actually tutorializes how to play three card Monty there. But uh, because I got it, I guess they just said, yeah, you don't need to. That's sick. Oi, yes, you there. Come back. Hey, what the hell? Ha 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 ha. Ahaha. Uh -huh. You actually thought the secret to three card Monty was to wave your arms like a fool. What do you mean? I know the trick. Never mind. He got me. Start by. Okay, they're gonna. They, uh, never mind. They force you to do the tutorial anyway. Pick them up and show them to me. This this one's a rhythm based thing where you have to click them uh, in the time. For the important part, the secret that makes it work, you can either play fair and put the queen down or cheat by putting down the card behind it. Of course, we're gonna cheat. Mix them up, but be careful to keep a good rhythm. You see, it's a little... This one's like DDR. You ever heard of it? Or like Guitar Hero. And if you miss it, if you miss one of those, you just lose. But you don't take like... It's not like a hard defeat or anything if you miss one of those. And he flips the six. Now... Very good, I didn't even see you cheat. I think you're ready now. I feel a little bit like I got got. But you know what? It's okay. I'll allow it. I don't care to talk to this guy again. He's a bitch. You can just click to move around, and I guess that's cool, but it doesn't seem like there's any reason to. McGregor is probably after you already. It's not the uncertain hand of chance that has me in this dump. I'm glad you appreciate my hospitality. At least it's better than Versailles. Fucking got him. Hey, it's me. I'm here to cheat at three card Monty. Get out of my way. Meet the magician. I will wait outside. Hey, I'm here. The conk seems to think you have abilities. Trick me. Now, I want you to know, I'm not going to do this here, but when I played this the first time on my own, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be big brain, and I'm going to not cheat here, because what if I don't cheat, and then he goes, oh, well, you definitely cheated. It's like a he knows that I know, so I know that he knows sort of situation. But no, you, you just have to, you have to cheat. But I thought I was going to be a super genius, you know? I thought I was going to be so smart and really, really outsmart this guy. Because he's he's, a, he's like a magician. He's a big dude. Of course he knows I'm cheating at three-card Monty, right? But I guess this game takes place in the 1700s. So they didn't know that three-card Monty was a scam yet. But he should know it's a scam, you know? But I guess it's like, oh, show me that you can scam me. Time for me to show you a trick. I'm going to teach you how to read an opponent's mind. I'll prove it to you now. I'm so confident I'll put $40 on the line. Pick a card, any card, from the deck and place it on top. Remember which one you choose. I'm feeling Jack of Hearts. Mm-hmm. I should have gone Ace of Hearts. 
Uh, yeah, I remember my card. Pick a number between two and five. I'm picking three today. All right, now watch this. I'm going to shuffle the deck and then cut it. He is shuffling. Abracadabra, and who your card is in the deck? Remember the number you chose? Watch. One, two, three. Mm-hmm. There's no way I'm par with my coins. Yeah, you can't lie to him there either. You owe me nothing. The Comte told me of your origins. And see that look in your eye. It's always the same. You want to know how I did it. I'm willing to explain since you showed such promise with three card Monty. Those are my card. The Ace of Diamonds and placed at the top of the deck. For the time being, let's keep it simple. I'll choose the number one. It means all we have to do is keep the Ace at the top. Let's see what happens if we start shuffling. First, we start mixing the cards. We can keep an eye on the ace, but if we keep shuffling, the ace is gone. Mm -hmm. Reset the deck and see what we can do differently. They're going to teach us how to mark cards here, which is actually a pretty important mechanic later on, too, I found. Start shuffling again, but only drop a clump of cards once. At this stage, we know that the ace is at the top of the pile in our bottom hand, but if we keep shuffling, we'll lose it. Uh huh. The rights look suspicious. The trick is to put a marker next to our card so we can find it later. Dropping one card onto the pile and offsetting it slightly. This is called in jogging. You do that. We did this. I did this in at least one other uh, trick, but I imagine it all starts to blend together. There's 28 card tricks here. Now you can shuffle the rest without worrying about losing the ace. Mm -hmm. And then you can just click and drag really fast to shuffle fast. That matters when you're on the clock a bit. We want it at the top, and it's somewhere in the middle. That's where we cut the deck over the in-jog card with our fingers and cut the deck at that point. The next card down was our ace, remember? So when we recombine the piles, it's back at the top. Pretty cool, huh? And then we do it again, but we do it with four. Oh, wait, first we gotta do it again. We gotta do it on our own. This section's a little bit long-winded. On the second playthrough, on the first playthrough, I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm learning here. But this game definitely feels like it doesn't have a ton of replay value to me. Just re-going over content is like, eh, I've already learned this. Which is fine, I don't think that every game has to have crazy high replay value or anything. And I do really appreciate that you can just redo things as much as you want. Now he's gonna he's gonna tell us about how we can do it uh, with extras by doing... He, he, yeah, he's gonna show us how to do it with multiple cards, like the two, the three, and the four. He's picking four, so we offset with three other cards. Which I think you just... Uh, and we'll see. Shuffle some cards down once, like earlier. Mm -hmm. For in drawing, we need offset. Drop three more cards. Oh, it's like you're pretending like you're shuffling. You see? I get it. It makes them think you're shuffling, because it looks like you're shuffling, but you're really not. Card magic's sick. I really think it's cool. I've never, I never stopped to learn it, but a lot of it feels just cheap, you know? I guess it is just sleight of hand, though. Let's see, shall we? One, two, three, and four. Impressive work. Now, before you go running off trying to impress everyone with your newfound wizardry, heed some advice. There's nothing more embarrassing than messing up a magic trick, so keep practicing. I get to choose, and neither me nor anyone you show this to will pick the number four just because you learned it. Pay attention, offset that far. He picks two. Ah. When I did this last time, he picked uh, four. There's a little indicator at the top, though, to show you where your card is, which is nice. So, like, it sounds really intense, but it's actually pretty laid back once you get to look up there, you know? Like, the interfaces are all well done to make it go, oh yeah. Would you like to practice again? No, I'm good. You know what you're doing? You're a quick study. The Comte has done well. Yeah, right, let's get out of here. I'm gonna go do... Uh, the next one I did, and then we will wrap up the video. I feel like you get- I, I want to show you the overworld map, though. You tricked the magician? Mm-hmm. Hope you didn't sign away your soul when I've been working so hard to earn it. Uh? Not like you've sold it to death itself, so you're part of the family now. We share everything here, including our gains. Everything we give to the camp will be given a good use. It's like a poor people's bank. We support the elderly and the ones who can't work anymore, like Irene- Irenio. Oh, he's missing a leg, I see. I also hope that one day we could use that money to change things for real in this country. I will give $20. Your half of the money is to spend as you please. We would appreciate if you could spare some for our cause. I'm gonna give him... I think if you if you give him all of your money... You can't give him all of your money. Because then you can't keep going. I'll give, third, I'll give, a, I'll give a 10. Or sorry, a 20. We go half and half, no problem. 
We all give what we can. Thank you. We're done here and we should keep moving. So now the game opens up a little bit. You can look at the journal and read what you did. Uh-huh. Oh, it's like... It's written like the character would write it because he is, uh... You know, he's not particularly well learned. That's kind of cool. Anyway, so it opens up a bit here and you get to choose which of these you want to do next. I'm going to do Parliament's Cafe because this is the one that I did first last time. You can see the minimum bet as well. And so on the way there, they teach you the mechanic. We're heading to Toulouse. To Toulouse, maybe? A city on the verge of hysterical frenzy is the best place to make a profit. Mm -hmm. The whole city will be busy, noisy, and distracted. We cannot let this opportunity pass. Before I get explaining our next strategy, do you need a refresher on card values JQKA? No, but if, I'm not going to give him this one. But uh, if you if you don't know, he will tell you the order and such, which again, I really appreciate. The magician showed you a technique that allows you to maintain and offset a stack, didn't he? Most you now have a strong foundation to work with, the technique has some flaws. Fiddling around with the deck at the table is just too risky. How else can we stack the deck? Something I call the Full Harvest. Collect cards at the end of a round so they sit favorably in the deck during the next one. Picture in your mind how the cards will fall if you're the dealer. Because I'm sitting to your right, I'll be dealt last. That's where we want the high value cards. Pick up the card clumps in an order that ensures I'll end with a high card when you deal. Like so, and then you go left to right over there. You just click and drag over them to go in a direction. This game, this one is actually pretty hard, I feel, because you have to process it real fast. Perfect, I'm guaranteed a lovely strong card when you deal. You're doing well, but it'll be a bit more complex. There'll be more cards, and I'm a greedy boy, so make sure I get three high-value cards. First of all, don't call yourself a greedy boy, please. I'm not comfortable with that. Give me the seven and then these three. And then give me, like, two and two. It doesn't matter what the other hands get, by the way. It only matters what he gets. I could give them all high cards, too. But if you mess up even one of his cards, you lose this game. Would you like to move on? Yeah, please. And you've just collected the cards from the table. Think about how we arrange them and how they'll be dealt out. Every fourth card will be dealt to me. Thanks to you, they'll have high values. Indeed. But of course, we can't start dealing just yet. We have to shuffle. Or pretend to, at least. Allow me to introduce you to the art of ineffective shuffling. Drop some cards. Favorable stack is now at the bottom. The rest of the cards will pile up on top. And now we do the in-jog, right? This all sounds familiar indeed. The magician taught you well, I see. You do an in-jog, you, you shuffle the rest. And you gotta go fast on the shuffling when you're in the actual game because of the timer. It's not like, it's not super stressful, but you know. And then he cuts the deck, he finds the in card, he cuts the deck, and then boom. Now, in practice, I feel like this trick would have trouble because the other players would go, hey, you guys are just using the same cards over and over again. That's a little suspicious, isn't it? But, you know. Yeah, I mean, maybe they wouldn't notice because they're picking up their cards. I don't know. Yeah, they're discarded cards in an order that ensures a favorable deal, then pretend to shuffle before leaning on me to cut the deck. Let me scatter some cards down so you can rehearse it. And then this time around, he's second. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, he's second. What the hell? Why is he second? That's extremely weird. I mean, I'm gonna fail this. He's always fourth. I've been had. Yeah, I'm just gonna shuffle. I don't... It doesn't matter. This time, we're not even cheating. Maybe he wins. You never know. This game is pretty animation heavily. We seem to have gone wrong somewhere. I think we should go over it again. Rehearse. I can, I know what to do. And now you're at the end, so it's no big deal this time. I don't know why the hell he was at the front that time. Two and two, there you go. It even said, I didn't see that. I've never seen that happen before. You go shuffle one, in jog one, shuffle the rest. What I like about this game is that it keeps you on your toes, you know? You're not just doing the same thing over and over again. We keep doing different card tricks. Perfect. We learn a new one. And like that one's almost, it's partial, it has something similar to the last one. But like it's completely different from Three Card Monty and it's also completely different from the, the drink pouring one. And it, what, what this game seems to do is kind of mix the elements of them together. We rest. I'll fetch my quill and you can show me your vowels. I see the capital. We've arrived. Remember, the stakes are getting higher, lad. We cannot be discovered. And here we are in the cafe, but 
You are cheating. Jean-Baptiste Leron de Lambert. I think this guy might be someone in history. Boasting. Please don't make that face. Sir, I can explain. I'm truly happy to make your acquaintance. The nobility is full of scammers and cheats, but they're all inept amateurs. Real con artists are a rarity for good reason. Hey, Voltaire, come here. I think it's pretty funny that they just put Voltaire in this game also. Come here and meet these gentlehommes. I'm gonna mostly skip through this because I want to wrap up here. I want to show you the last bit of gameplay, but, you know. Oh, I want to I wanna show you one more, uh, th this last one, and then wrap up. I feel like I've given you a pretty good overview of this game. I'll give you my thoughts here in a second. Uh, last bit here is we actually get to see the suspicion meter now, and if this caps out, you lose. If you bet more money, uh, you gain suspicion faster. And the suspicion will go up as the gameplay goes on as well. Like, if I take too long here, they're going to become suspicious. Slowly but surely. This one's pretty forgiving because it's the first one. It seems like it's actually resetting every time I pick up cards. Later ones don't do that. And then we go shuffle one, in jog one, and then shuffle the rest. And then this is persistent over the course of the game. So as you start to make more money from the game, the bar starts to fill up more. I wanted to get to this one because this is the first one that shows off the actual timing mechanic, which becomes important through the rest of the game. I didn't see anything. You are really good. Could I ask you a question? Do you play to earn money or do you play for the mere pleasure of tricking your opponent? Neither. Each game I play this is so fucking pretentious. Each game I play is just a brick in the edifice I'm building. Each trick is an element of a larger plot. I play patiently, slowly, until I can trick the sun. Yeah. Shut the hell up. Now if you want, you can bet more, but it starts the suspicion meter higher. I'm gonna keep the bet low because if I- I don't, I don't want to just lose if I fuck up this game. Because I am... Hello? There we go. I am prone to fucking this game up a little bit. Uh, also, oh man, what the hell? It's two and... two? And then what? Oh, I can do three this way and then one to get the ace. You see that? It's kind of it's kind of tricky. The picking up of the cards anyway. It's a little tricky. This part's easy. It's just left, down, left, left. Then he cuts and we go. But yeah, I, I appreciate this game a lot. I think that it's fun. I think that it's pretty well stylized as well. Why, this is art. Another round, the expense feels no different to a trip to the theater. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna bet at all. Yeah, I don't know what happens if you run out of money, but I don't want to find out either. Uh, give me... Maybe like three, one here, and then we we're at two, so I could do two, and like it seems pretty intense, but you got a lot of time. Like the suspicion meter is filling, but it's okay. Like nothing, se nothing bad seems to happen unless it fills up all the way, and then you get shot. Hello, hello. Oh, it's down. I was doing the in jog. Oh, what a disaster. My B, my B. I apologize. And I, like, it says preferred on controller, by the way, but I don't really notice any big difference on mouse. This little experiment is getting too expensive for me. I shall go back to my writings. Thank you, gentlemen. It was enlightening. I look forward to seeing the sun blush. And that's the end of that one. And then you can jump around, you go over to here, you go over to here, or you can go back to the camp and send them more money. And also, if you want to, you can read the journal. Yeah, buddy. I also could not spell to to loose. They enjoyed our cheating. Three question marks. The Comte seems that says they are famous for being clever. You must have to be very clever to enjoy being made to feel stupid. Yeah. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I think this game's cool. I really do. Uh, also, I want to say if you end up picking a higher difficulty and not liking it, or a lower difficulty and you want to try higher, you can change that in the menu at the end or once you start the game. Again, this one has variable difficulties as you get in. So the mat and menu changes and you can go review the strategies whenever you want and go like oh yeah this is what we're doing here also cool but yeah i think this game is pretty neat it does seem like a linear experience to me i don't feel like this is something that you're gonna play uh, more than once maybe like once and then you let it sit for a while but as you can see by me scrolling through here there's a lot of these little strategies that you learn so there's a pretty good depth of content i think there's 28 total uh, and they get more complicated and the stakes get a little higher as you go on. Like I was on, I was doing number five or number six and I was getting, it was getting to be pretty hardcore. So 
you know, definitely give this game a shot. It's, uh, what, 17 bucks on Steam again? Yeah, 17 bucks on Steam, $20 if you're watching this after June 9th. And I think that wraps it up. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.